Father like daughter. You got to compute that thing out of my way. Yes, sir. Back Go back. Here. Yeah. Do you want this one? Like yeah, that. I think that. You good? Yeah, but can we shrink this down somewhere yeah. else? I don't know where. Hold on. Just minimize that thing somewhere. Hide thumbnail video. There you go. Okay, because I don't really want to eat. And I think I can move this. You can move it. There. There. You good? You good? Yes, I okay. think we're good to go. Okay. All right, now we're we're uh, getting somewhere. And pastor's not tech savvy, he says, but guess what? I am completely worse than he is. That says a lot. <laughs> so anyway, we've been doing the study of the spiritual rebound chart. I mean, I've I've taught um, over the past several years now. So I'm just going to do a uh, quick outline of what we've covered so far, and then also what we are going to be continuing to do as um, I, I speak forward on. So just wanted to give a brief update of what we've done, just so since it's been a while since we've, we've uh, seen it. So before we begin in Romans 6, I just wanted to go through it. We did, we did unbelief or disbelief where the one who chooses not to believe in Christ for eternal life, you see, and we know what happens if you're not in the book, of, written in the book of life, and you can see that in Revelation 2015. We also spoke on the cross, John 1, 29, and 1 Corinthians 5, 19, and 21. We also did uh, the section of believe, uh, where the one who chooses to believe in Jesus for eternal life, he believes in that promise for eternal life, um, I just threw up a quick scripture of John 5, 24 as an example of the, all of the verses we used, but which one we did there. We also covered who guaranteed it. Well, we know who guaranteed it because it is Jesus Christ. He said, I am. We also know that you can go through the book of John and you can look throughout and then you can go elsewhere in scriptures and find who actually guarantees um, the our eternal life status and how, why we are able to have it as that free gift. We also covered change of citizenships from the family of Satan to the family of God. We covered that. We also covered being a citizen, living in the kingdom. First Corinthians one thirteen was that one. And then we also went back and tied in this, and because it all comes underneath, you, you once you believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life, you you you're guaranteed that that because of His promise, because He said He can't break the promise He makes, and because you believe in Him, you, that's where you see the change of citizenships, and you became that citizen of the kingdom. I'm not talking about inheriting the kingdom; we're talking about just being it being there in it, in the presence. So, and then we tied it back up to the, the main circle of unconditional real, eternal relationship that you guys are used to seeing. And we tied it back in with John, excuse me, John 11, 25 and 27 um, to tie that back together. We also covered eternal security of why he was it, the one who covered, who's able to guarantee it because he's the one that secures it. He's the one who wants you to believe in him for that life. Guess what? He said that that he, he takes it, you can't, no matter how far you wander away, no matter what you do, you're eternally secure because of what he did, not because of what you do. So all that, so we cover a lot on eternal security to make sure we understand what eternal security is and, and why you can't get out of it. That's why that solid, that was a solid circle. We also call, we also covered a lot called journey for, for the believer. This dealt with the fellowship, your walking time, your living it out. We dealt with the process of living it out and knowing true reality, knowing what's what's real. This time is going to come and go, but reality is when we get home. And so we covered that. We also covered the things about willing and available, sharing without confusing the message of life, discipleship, and making a case for Christ. Then we went on and covered qualifications we all have the opportunity equal opportunity to inherit the kingdom and be able to be that be the ruler help with the rulership and ruling and reigning then we went on and hit aiming at the goal our goal is to be able to rule and reign with him we also went into where we talked about the rights the rights were were your 
you have since you have that opportunity to inherit, you have the right to be able to do so because of what he did and what he promised us. Then we then we went to study, learn, and share it. So we took it, we understood it, we learned it. Now we went off and shared it. We called it the boomerang effect. You you take it, you want to take what you your knowledge that you you are given. You, and you take it and you put it into practice. That's where it comes into. And because you put it into practice, you went out and shared what you, what you learned. Then we went into a, a big study on following the blueprint and the guide. The Bible is our tool. It's our it's our main focus. It's the, what we use day to day. We also we also we are given commentaries to build on the tool so we can understand. Then we go back to we can have the Greek and we have the Hebrew and we can learn what everything is that's in there to make sure that when we're looking at the scripture it, we're not just taking it out of context we're actually looking at the context and pulling out what it says not trying to put something in place of it which we'll get into later again then we went into the importance of communication this communication is you speaking to him through prayer you taking your bible opening it not just leaving it on a shelf letting it get dusty or leaving it just because you you only need it on Sunday or Wednesday. So the, the, port, the importance of communication is that way you have a direct, we have a direct line. We don't have to go see a priest. We don't have to go do anything because we already are. So we have that direct line where we can take the word of God and see it, understand it, and do it. Then we also have the communication. We can pray back. If you struggle with knowing what to pray, go to the book, go to the book of Psalms it, and just just. Use the Psalms as a prayer until you just start, it just starts flowing from you. And then we went into the part of the crown. We went in talking about what kind of servant are you? And we're going to go into more of that. We're still not, we're, we're, we're done in the believer side of this. But, but as we go through things, we get into the motions. And then all of a sudden it becomes, it becomes a norm. And we, we get into that rut and we don't even realize we're in a rut. So the, the thing about the servant is, is we want to make sure that we're not in a walking down a path and all of a sudden, how do we get here? Because we've been on this path for forever, but we didn't, but, but all of a sudden you, you get into a wake up call. So we're looking, that's what we're going to be digging into. The kind of servant you are is the one who wants to stand in righteousness versus unrighteousness. So that's what kind of servant you need to be. So we're continuing on. Um, in the chart, in the chart, I I just threw it up here on the screen. You guys have it on Zoom, but it's a, this is uh, what we first started off with. There's actually a lot more than this. Um, there's a whole nother section that drops down in, in another part of, of the chart. But um, as I told Bruce two weeks ago, we and I just told Pastor uh, last week or week before, we expanded that. We're going to go into how we expanded it because. At the moment, we've covered everything on the chart all the way up through in the part of, of right at the, you're right at the bubble where you're at that perforated line and you're trying to, you want to make sure you're staying in fellowship, but you're you're starting to get too close to the line and you're starting to take, you're, you're like the, like the kid who wants to keep chance and stuff. You want to, you, you're like, well, I'm supposed to stay inside the fence, but if I put my finger, my hand through it, I'm still on this side of the fence. So you're, we're, we're getting to that part of, of this chart where we're starting to play play around with it. And instead of staying in, in the main line lines of, of, of living it out and trying to do what we're told to do, we start getting into, we start swinging into other things and worldly views are starting to intake, intake us more than doctrine. So that's where we're starting to bring this chart into which will lead us into carnality and so forth but where we're going to cover today we already did a big uh, several classes on dominion over versus control by this in nature of romans 6 12 through 14 which is we're going to look at uh finishing that up today uh, but um i wanted to go quickly through this so people would know what what's going what's coming so we're going to wrap up today, dominion over versus control by the sin nature. Then we're going to go into exam. Exam is going to be basically branched out. It's going to, it, this is, this is basically no, like your preset of number, number one, or you can call it letter A of exam. 
there's two exams that we're going to go into. But today we're only going to be examining the test, the search, the spiritual growth. Are you staying in check? And are you avoiding that autopilot mode? Are you avoiding the autopilot mode? That's the problem with a lot of us. We get into this crutch and we get into the ruts and all of a sudden we're, we're, we're just kind of doing it because we don't want to do anything else and we want we don't want to focus on anything else but we want we, we let ourselves get into that mode and then because it's easy we don't have to we we just we just want to get by and the problem is getting by doesn't give you reward Re, that, that does nothing that's not going to help that's not going to help your spiritual growth getting by does nothing for your spiritual growth because that just puts you where you're back to where you're inheriting the king you're, you're going to be in the kingdom but you're not going to be part of the inheritance of the kingdom so we're going to get into a lot of that that stuff but we'll be in second Corinthians 13 5 in our second class um and then we'll also be going into the book of proverbs later on but we'll be dealing with what i want to call the autopilot mode autopilot mode is where we get into that 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 mentality and we want to make sure that we're examining ourselves, not looking at examining anyone else around you. Just you're you're looking at you, you spiritually. Are you not talking about are you are you looking at are you born again in that sense? But are you looking at yourself in the spiritual on the sanctum on the phase two sanctification? We're looking at your experience. Are you actually living it out? Are you living it out and do what it says? We're gonna get into a lot more of that later on. But underneath of the exam is going to be which path are you this is where we're going to get into the mode of are we we're we're looking at road of prosperity versus destruction and then we're going to be in the book of, that's where when we get into the the path we'll start digging in a lot more on the exam side of the proverbs and the the out of romans and then some places in james and, and so forth but we're going to look at several different uh sections to hit on in our path so when we get into the path we'll be looking at watchful motivated habits warning discipline deception dull of hearing depraved mind foolishness then once we wrap up on the path of exam one and, and if i go too fast i can i can send you this stuff sorry I just want to move along because this isn't this is we're not even in the review yet. <laughs> so um but we we also will be going into the chart the chart on carnality. We're gonna be in the book of Romans 8, 6, and 7. Under under that umbrella will be the temporal death, how you stray into world, how you're straying into world viewpoint. That's where you you mess up, you fess up, you get back into fellowship. That's the temporal side of things. But, but we, we also will dig into three phases of sin. We will also dig into the pharisaical attitude of the older brother out of Luke uh, 15, 28 through 31. We will be looking at the three disciplines. We kind of worked on that a little bit here a while ago. We also will look at spiritual darkness, operational death, and the eighth death. Underneath the umbrella of carnality is lost. Losses. We're going to be doing a lot of study out of the book of Luke. We're going to be in. We'll be in the first sixteen verses, and we will be looking at in loss. We will be looking at the parable of the lost sheep, the coin. We will look at wonder, the wonder away of the prodigal son. The we'll look some more into the eighth death of the mythological loss of reward. Rewards because of being out there in the outer. Because you are in outer darkness, you're going to. It'll tie that in, and then we also will look at prodigal the wasteful and we'll look at how god permits his children to waste and squander away things and away and they will and it'll go back to the point that he gave uh you and i the opportunity to learn of what life is with without him and in the midst of that we will also um look at the part of how it ties into repentance and how uh, the Lord will bring do anything to bring back his child. He, you know, look at the prodigal son, and he brought famine upon that son. So think about if you might have already been in this situation, you might have already been on that in that path, and you've come back. So you can think about you can put your own thing in there, or if 
you are on that path, you can see what kind of path you would go to and, and the destruction of that. We also will look at repentance. Repentance is on, we'll be looking out of the book of Acts. We'll be looking to looking at turning to God's way from the world's view, which applies into the initial belief and then back into returning to back into fellowship. We'll, elect, we'll, we'll look at the lack of or the refusal of repentance, which will come back under rebuke. And then we'll tie that back in to the same thing of what happened to the, the, chi the child um, so of how he repented out of Luke 15. And then we will go into Luke 19 uh, with Zacchaeus. When we get all that done, then we're going to jump back in and look at how um, out of Luke 15, we're going to look at how we can look at the next section of the exam. We'll have basically exam one and exam two. Exam one will have is was all about uh, the, the going into the path and how you got into that path. It'll be about the testing to keep us from going into carnality and being lost. Second exam is all about where you've already been in that path. Now you understand you're on that path and you need to correct your way. So just like because it went from repentance. You realized it. Now you're coming into the examining. You're seeing that the fact that you are not in the in His will, and that's where you're going to see you're judging yourself to to correct yourself so that you won't be judged when you get to the judgment seat of Christ. Then we'll die into how how we need to be motivated and diligent. When we get when we wrap those up, we will tie in. Oops, sorry. We'll tie in confession. And where now you're naming and citing the things you did outside the will of the Father. Hopefully you never go into repentance or you don't, because you can just go into temporal death and then you realize it and move back in because that's the idea. You don't want to go that far, but we're going to cover the things if we ever do go that far and what happens to those who do. And then it will tie back in to forgiveness and restoration which will tie us back up on the book of James and Luke. We will look at the love of the father. We will look at the father and how, how he has compassion on not the son. And then we'll tie in the punishment discipline and how the natural consequences of, of being, being far off and what happens if you do. So we'll, when we wrap up forgiveness and restoration, we're going to jump back to, the same passage, but we're going to look at the part of just found alive. We're going to look at how the son was dead in operational death in the death, and now he's alive because he repented, he returned and returned. So we're going to look at that, and we're going to look at how what the father does. We're going to look at how the father reacts to the child, and how the Lord is the same way with us when we return. When we when we're in there, we're going to be continuing to look at. Um, how he was dead he, for that, that, how that is, he is lost, which is operational death. And then, um, how he, for, he is now back alive. But in this section, I will not be tying in the discipline and consequences. We're going to tie that back in on, back up on carnality. And then we need to look at rejoice. When, when I was going through this, I did not realize how much more I needed to expand this. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> um we real by looking in the scriptures and studying this section out i really realized how much more there is to what i needed to to uh do from the moment that you you broke that perforated line and what it took to come all the way back in the moments that we we miss out on things we miss out on the fact of you're found alive you miss we, we don't think we don't think those things we don't because we just go through like like when we're doing the chart we don't realize what what it takes and what what sense it is when um a fellow believer comes back in from repentance we don't rejoice with them and we don't you know when someone comes back to the church we we do we remember to rejoice with them that they're they're back here um sometimes we do and other times we we, we don't it, it doesn't click. We're just, hey, great, great, glad to see you. But, but there's a there's a rejoicing time that we should have, yeah. um, a celebration, in some in some sense. And then we're going to come back to fellow, maintain the fellowship and time of the temporal relationship. When we do so, we're going to come. We're going to be covering a lot out of Galatians. 
And we're going to tie in Galatians 5.25. Of course, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So now that all that being said, we're going to go, now we're going to get into dominion over versus the controlled. Um, some of this review, if you remember, if you missed um, any of this, um, it is on, I believe on the rumble and YouTube section channels that uh, you can go back and review. I can give you notes. We can send you the, uh, the booklet that we have up to this point. If uh, you need so, just please contact Bruce or I, and we can help take care of that. So um, to begin, let's look at, we're going to, we're going to go through the definition of dominion. Definition of dominion is the power or right of governing and controlling the sovereign authority is rule or sway. It's the control of it or influence. Sin is destructive. Remember, God knows the power of sin in each one of us. He knows it because Jesus Christ is redemptive work. We no longer need to be controlled by that power of the sin, na of the sin nature because of what he's done for us. And once you believe in him, you are no longer under that. Believers can live out their spiritual life successfully. We're going to glance through this in Romans 6, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, and 18, and 20. Probably won't get to all those, but we will mention a few of those. We also, we also know that believers have free will. It's a choice. You get a direction. You can take either path A or B. You can decide if you're going to go to righteous, lead, go the, the path of righteousness or the path of unrighteousness. And that's where we're going to go to when we get into the exam and on path. You all of a sudden you're you think you're you're heading this way on righteousness, and all of a sudden you wonder, how did I get to this point? How did I get here? And all of a sudden you're part of the unrighteousness and become a slave of sin. We're gonna we know that Romans 6, 17, 18 talks about the slave of righteousness. Galatians 5 16 is all about our walking by the spirit. Ephesians 5 18 is all about the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now, with our Bibles open, look at Romans 6. This is our main the main passage of Romans 6 that we dealt with. It says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its it and its lusts. So thing is about obeying sin's lust by using their their bodies their which is your arms your legs etc you're you you're using those instruments of sinful aims of and activities of unrighteousness when you're obeying the lust but it states it says do not let sin reign in your mortal body remember the, what the body is we are not to let the sinfulness the unrighteousness take over you're not to obey, it's obey it. We're not to think of ourselves any longer as servants of sin and death. We're to walk, as it says in 6.4. It says 6.4 say, states, Therefore, for we were buried with him through baptism into death, it, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of uh, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. We're to walk in it. It doesn't mean that we're going to do it because of our because we do have this in nature. We do, we will we we fail. We do mess up. We still have it. But we are not to be walking in the old nature anymore. We're told to walk in the new nature. So we're not going to let the dominate dominance of our sin nature take over. So you want to walk in that newness of life. You're no longer dead, but you've been raised up. And if you look again and circle, I like the I, I I've got it, the word therefore underlined because it's why do you think it's therefore? As Pastor would always tell me, well, it's therefore. It's like a slap, like if somebody said a slap in the back of the head. Pay attention because that's basically what it's telling you. Pay attention. It said, do not. I circled the word do not in my Bible. Why? Because it's a commandment. He said, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't do it. Don't let it. Don't obey the, the flesh. That's basically what you're, what you're to not do. You're not to obey the flesh. So when it says do not, 
it is still a choice. He he's not he's not pulling you around, telling you you got to do it. Blah blah blah. You have that. You have free will. You have to choose to do it. You have to choose. Am I going to do this or that? Are you going to go down this path or this path? So the thing is, we need to be able to listen to what he says, and because he gives us the Holy Spirit, we need to listen to the Word of God. So that way we don't let the we don't let the desires of our flesh care, be carried out. We don't want them to take control of us. Looking at 13, and it says again, and do not. I circled that one. Present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. And here, here's the here's what we're supposed to do, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So we are to basically turn it over. We're supposed to look at it. We're supposed to be available for some purpose. That is to be able to be at someone's disposal. So think about it. Paul's point is that they that they previously put the members of their bodies at sin's disposal, and he told them they should stop doing so. So the fact is, we are to put our bodies at God's disposal. We are to be right on in the step by step path of Him. So the question to each one of us and examining our when we're going to get an examining, are we? Are we stuck in a rut and not and not paying attention to what's going on in our surroundings that we're walking down a path that he said, this is unrighteousness, but we're just like I'm, we're I'm, I'm comfortable here, I'm doing what I want to do. It's that mindset. So are we at God's disposal or are we in our own our own world? In our own thought, it's about me, me, me kind of attitude because that's what leads to the depraved mind, which leads to foolishness and what kind of fool you are and then how it leads into carnality and so forth. So we need to be at God's disposal. Last week, we spoke on the unity from and the things that we are supposed to be looking at each one of us and what we're specifically supposed to be doing. Are we doing that? Are we taking it apart, the scripture apart, and looking and examining ourselves, which we're going to get into directly? And then in 614, it says, for sin shall not, again, another commandment, shall not, we shall not do this. You know, it's another, he had to tell you three times, don't do it, do, do, don't do, let your sin be don't let your, your body be the instruments of, of the unrighteousness of sin. And then he had to turn around and says, don't let it have dominion over you. That's why we named it dominion over versus control. We need to make sure that we are letting ourselves have the dominating factor of controlling that sin nature. We were going to get into first Corinthians later, but it's uh, not uh, uh, Paul but it, it ties back into, it'll tie back into this first because of what Paul did to make sure that he wasn't disqualified because he made sure that he was doing what he was so, told to do. And then he's making sure he's keeping in check it and not letting his sin nature have the control over him. So the thing is, if, if we as believers were to obey the truth of verse 13 of obeying him and presenting ourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and the instruments of righteousness, then we would wouldn't have to worry about the fact that we're we're letting ourselves um, be tied in to the instruments of unrighteousness because we decided to let ourselves obey that lust of the flesh. Psalms one nine. We don't have time to turn there, but Psalms one nineteen. One. You know what? Let's go ahead. Let's do it. Psalms one nineteen one thirty three. Let's look one more page. Okay. It says from his word, direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. That's that that's a verse we should be hanging up on our wall and thinking about. Lord, I want to have you direct direct the way that you want me to go. Not just today, but every day, because we don't know what our past going to what, what where the Lord's going to lead us in from years today. 
we don't even know if we're going to be here years from today, but that's not the sermon of the day. But the, but the point is, is no matter how long we're still here, we need to be focused on living it out. Well, if we, the way that we can focus on living it out is the mere fact, are we praying this? This is a prayer. Direct my steps, O oh Lord. Think about it. My steps. You put in your name in there, and you can put it in, and then you can put it in at the end. Don't let anything of the iniquity, anything of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the desires that my sin nature want to entice me in. And, and whatever your struggle might be, I don't want to know. No one here needs to know. Your spouses probably know, but that's all that uh, they're the only other ones who who will who will and should know besides our Heavenly Father. Because you don't you don't need to go around announcing it to anybody else. But we need but when we're praying and we're doing uh our prayer, like we, we used to have prayer journals we passed out back back years ago. But when we're looking at it. Are we, you know, are we exam when we examine ourselves in the mindset of, of our prayer journal, when we are doing um, the supplication of, of things, we should be looking at the fact that this should be a prayer of ours. Lord, direct me. Take, take me basically by the hand, lead me. And he's going to. Why? Because he gives us the word of God. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the church where we, we can sit under the pastor teacher to be able to learn and understand the doctrines that we may not knew. And then we take it, we go home, and then we expound on it to understand it more. And it goes into basically like the explosion version of how what happened the first time one night, uh, spiritual rebound chart. It comes into that mindset. It comes into the thought process of letting him direct you. So that way today, when somebody cuts me off when I'm driving down the road, I don't, words don't come out of my mouth. Things of the nature that you want to say, or, you, you know, whether you pull the horn or whatever you may do, the fact remains, if somebody does something to us or steps on our toes that day at work, we can keep ourselves from doing that. Why? Because, Lord, let us not have dominion that dominion that control when your when your boss yells at at your employee i don't do that i hope not brother <laughs> i did that to the other one i never thought about that sorry but the fact that, how are you going to handle it how are you going to handle it you're going to have dominion over this in nature or are you going to let it control you he wants to make sure that he doesn't let the sin nature dominate him. He doesn't want it to dom have dominion over him. That, but we we put the words in dominion over the flesh versus controlled. But it's the same it's the same thought process. Are we going to let ourselves have that mindset? Are we going to? Then we we need we look at this as we wrap up Sunday school right now. Um, we need we know that dominion means control or rulership. Iniquity is the vanity. It's emptiness. It's worthlessness. It's things. It does absolutely nothing for you to be able to earn that reward and put put treasure away. It does nothing. So that your sin nature does exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to not be a winner. He wants you to be a loser. He wants you to be stuck in the rut. So we're going to come back from Sunday school and we're going to begin. Let's see how to examine ourselves to know where we are spiritually. Second Corinthians 13, 5 is where we're going to be. A lot of a lot of so-called pastors and teachers and uh, theologians want to pull this underneath phase one sanctification, uh, phase one versus sanctification. But we're going to find out how this exam is actually to the believer, and then it's going to base off of where, where we're heading into the path and how we as believers need to be looking at ourselves deep within ourselves, digging in, ripping out the trash and getting back on the path. So let us uh, pray and then we will have a uh, about a 14 minute break. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your word, Lord. Help us to 
um, not be controlled by our sin natures, not let the flesh win, Lord. Lord, let us have that um, understanding that we need to dominate the sin nature so that way we can beat it back, Lord. So that way we can uh, qualify to be winners for you, Lord, and be able to have that crown that you have put away for us, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope I did that right. Okay. From now to uh take right I hope so. I hit stop video. Did that do it? Or does it... Okay, then I didn't do it. Oh, stop. <laughs>